Hey guys, and welcome back to Regrexit. Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe. And in Brexit England, the Tories have decided they won't prefer to die the death of a thousand cuts down a long, whiny road. As if they have been stranded on a desert island and the person didn't first ask them, if you were stranded on a desert island, what free things would you need? That's a question to you. If you were stranded on a desert island, what free things would you need? You're stranded with a Brexiter. <laughs> now that would be harsh. So Boris Johnson has, has won his vote in confidence in Boris Johnson. So the Tory party have, have, have confidence in Boris Johnson but they believed that they was going to they, that you know they 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 thought that a hundred Tory MPs, right, wouldn't be too bad. But they set them, but they set their marker at about one hundred and thirty, which is just like which thinks yourself really. So you got one hundred and thirty people behind you, and they don't want to work with you. They're telling you they they're telling you they think you're an incompetent fool, right? You're a criminal, you're you're lazy, and you're a damn ass. All those people behind you are telling you that one hundred and thirty of them. That's what you thought would be telling you that, and you was prepared to still soldier on through. Well, one hundred and forty-eight told you that that you're incompetent. You're a big motherfucking Egypt. Right, and there's no way that you should have the keys to number ten. I know there's no keys to number ten, so let's not go there, right? But he should not have the keys to number ten, right? But, right, still, two hundred and eleven back to me. For yourself, who the hell is two hundred? Because I was thinking, well, there'll only be a few. There's not going to be that many. Just going to just going to back him. Obviously, you know, you're, you're going to have you know the only man who can fit into a size ten pencil skirt, Jacob Rees Mogg. Right, or you know, and um, maybe James not so cleverly, right? And um, the man who puts his hair on backwards in the dark with no hands and he's blind, Michael Fabricant, right? Or the world's most stupid politician, the, the person who's got the you know, who's got the title of being the world's most stupid politician. And that, and I know, I, I see you saying, now hold on a minute, how dare you? Right, make that assumption that in my mind, that's your mind, that you could tell me who's the world's worst politician. Well, I'm talking about Nadine Dorries, so you know, right? Or you know, Humpty Dumpty, Pretty Patel, right? You know, I would have thought it would be those, you know, those few and you know, maybe a few more that voted. But for two, get 211. That's not bad because, to be honest, I was expecting them to get around probably maybe around 150 people vote to, to to keep him in, you know. And Boris Johnson has spoke about how this is such a great, it's absolutely a great result for him. No, it's not a great result for you, you know. It's very really poignant, right? Because outside number outside the um, Houses of Parliament, right? You know what bus stops outside there. It's the number one four eight, right, and the two eleven, <laughs> and those are the exact figures. So, so I think they're saying, so I think the bus is just saying, nah, that's it, the stop, it stops right here, you right? You need to be, you need to be out of there. But he's gonna, he's gonna struggle them. But you know, they've got two, they've got two by elections coming up, and in one of those seats, yeah, they have got, um, they've got a majority of like twenty four thousand in one of those seats. 23, 24, about 24,000, I think, in one of those seats, right? And if that ever gets overturned, right? I mean, the Labour Party should just say, you know what? We're not going to put up a candidate. <laughs> and, and, you know, they could just get the, they could get really destroyed, especially if that, if you know, because obviously the Tories, the Tories will, have got the majority there at the moment, so it's over twenty four thousand. So it just depends on who, in who's who's in second place up there. But if you know, if if um, if Labour or the um, or the Liberal Democrats step off, right, to give the other one a running chance, right? Then and they lose that, right? Because I think I think there's one that they they're certainly going to lose. It's probably going to go back to Labour, 
what I think is a Red Wall seat, right? But um, there's there's one that's, that, that is like a, you know obviously twenty four thousand majority majority Tory. That's that is a strong that is a Tory stronghold. So we're going to have to see what happens there. But I don't think it's looking very I don't think it's looking very good for those for those two. But I think that Boris Johnson will try his hardest to limp on right until the next election. But yeah, unbeknown to most people. Right. I mean, you have to be like, like you have to like really know a, a, a bit about politics to understand, right, that the Tories can just change the rules. They can go to the 1922 Commission. There's been a 2920, whatever they're called, 1922, whatever they're called. Right. But they can go to them right, and they can just have one meeting bam, and change the rules. And Boris Johnson can be out of there. Right. So you see, Boris Johnson can think, you know what, I can cling on, I can cling on and I can cling on. Right. But the amount of damage that he's doing to the Tory party at the moment. Right. You've got people who are, you know, like you, you, you someone like you see a square head, Andrew Bridging, right, who will just tell you straight. Right. If this motherfucker thinks that he right, can just stay there and we won't, we will change the motherfucking rules to get this fool out. <laughs> right, so that's what that's what he's got to uh, that that's what he's going to have to contend with, right? Because I just don't see how I just don't see how he's going to turn this round. Because I've just seen a poll on GMB, right, and you know it was ninety one percent of people, right, do not have trust or confidence in Boris Johnson, right? Ninety one percent, right? That right is really harsh. And I would ask you this. Do you believe, right, that in the space of two short years, right, after taking over, if it was Jeremy Corbyn, they would have been having a vote in his competence? And also, welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. And a special thanks here to everyone who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that have signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go for all the messages. I'll answer as many as I can, but I will like all the messages for definite. You know, I've just seen a really disturbing report on GMB, right? Where where you've got um you had this this lady who's disabled from the neck downwards, right? And you know this poor woman was sat there in complete humiliation on an aeroplane for an hour and a half, right, before the staff could would come and take her off, right? Which obviously delayed the plane because you know they, you know a lot of these planes they just uh, give them a quick quick um, wash down and then you know they're, they're back you know flying back to the caribbean or back to greece or or back to portugal right so you know this poor woman was left there on this on this airplane yeah for like an hour and a half before they could get the staff to come and take her off right and you think just seriously this you have to wonder what this what, what this country is coming to Right, you have to really wonder what this country is actually coming to when this type of thing can actually happen, right? Especially in this country. But then, right, all the stories are coming in that this is not an isolated incident because these things have been happening for quite some time now, where where disabled people have been left on aeroplanes, right, to be to left there to be look pathetic. Right, you know, which is something that they, which is something, it's the humiliation they should never ever be facing, right? Never ever be facing, right? Now, you know, the, you know, the, obviously, the, you know, the pilot has walked past this woman. It's not that, you know, it's not, it's not for the pilot. It's not for the for the for the flight crew to get this woman off the pl off the plane. It's not, it's not down there. It's down to the airport. The, the the you know the people who run the airport. The you know the ground crews and all that. That's who it's down to. But you'd think that the pilot would walk past this woman and think, hold on a minute, why is this lady still on the plane? She's disabled. And you think he would just say, because if it's me, I'd be just be saying to the stewards, listen, right, we're going to get the lady to her wheelchair. Okay, done. Do you know what I mean? And then there's no there's no embarrassing stories in the newspapers about it because this has got to be it's a humiliating and embarrassing for this country. But in saying that, yeah, um, Baroness Tanny Gray Thompson, Thompson, yeah, was just on on GMB as well, right? And she said that she was in Germany two weeks ago, right? And she had to drag herself, right, off of a plane, right, to go, you know, and her wheelchair was by the door. Right, so she had to drag herself. Right, she had to get down on the floor, and because obviously you know, remember she's you know she's disabled, so she had to get down on the floor and drag herself to her wheelchair. You know, so but that was in that was in Germany, but you know I'm much more concerned about this happening to people in this country because this shouldn't be happening to people in this country. 
I don't care what happens in you know I don't care right you know uh, you know about how the Germans run their system I care about how we run our system and our system says that we should not right be having disabled people having to you know be humiliated on aeroplanes right that's what this country says okay that's what it says for this country right you know let the Germans be embarrassed about about their business I'm embarrassed about our business and that's how we should all feel, right? We should never be looking to other countries and saying, well, oh, we're worse over there. Because you've been telling black people, that you've been telling us that for years. Oh, well, it would be much worse for you in Poland. <laughs> like any black people really want to live in Poland. <laughs> but you get the point. Right? I could have said hungry. Damn! <laughs> The Russians have walked out of a UN meeting after being accused of being responsible for the lack of food around the world. And on the way out, the Russians said, you're lying, right? you're lying, it's not true. And so, you know, the Russian Federation needs to think to themselves, well, hold on a minute. You know, this shit's all over the news, right? You know, you bombed a grain factory just yesterday, right? Right, and then right, you also bombed right the the local like um train line to make sure that the grain couldn't move. Whatever grain wasn't bombed to make sure the rest of it couldn't move. I said, well, the Russian Federation will say to me, well, how do you know about that? What kind of secret information do you have? It's on motherfucking Sky News, BBC, ITV, Channel Four. Right? It's all over YouTube, fool. <laughs> Seriously, the Russians are just like, you know, you think to yourself, you childish motherfuckers. Are you having a fucking laugh? You jumped up and walked out of a meeting after you was accused, right, of, you know, because this, this is what they are doing. You know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're bombing, like, you know, wheat, fat, you know, wheat um, storage and all these type of things on a regular basis. So, you know, so, this, so they're, they're helping to starve out Africa because Africa depends heavily on wheat that comes out of... Um, on wheat that comes out of Ukraine, uh, you know, obviously the, a lot of the world depends on, on on this, and you know, this is something that I think a lot of the world didn't really realise <laughs> that, that they were so heavily heavily dependent on um, Ukraine for you know for wheat for for wheat that just travels all around the world. You know, but, yeah, but that is the case. Jim Finton has been jailed for fifteen years for thiefing artifacts right in Iraq. And you think to yourself, of all the places to go and steal artifacts, like your motherfucking Indiana Jones, who was just a thief, right? Indiana Jones, right? You want to watch him on the TV? Oh, Indy, Indy's a fucking thief, right? Guiding people's countries, right? And thiefing out their things and bringing it back and putting it in Western museums. Right, they want to give back all the shit what they've taken out of all these people's countries, right? You know this man, right? You know the stupid, uh, yeah. The things might have not been worth anything, but you know something, the Iraqis wanted it left where it was, right? And now, now, now you've got the British government say, oh, oh, how dare they? You think to yourself, well, you know something, yeah. People are in this country, in in prison in this country for stealing, right? For stealing things, right? That could have been worthless, in fact, as well. Right, you know, so so this is so that's how they handled their laws, right? And you know, it's not for us to go and start telling people, oh, how dare you lock people up for stealing stuff that's worth nothing? Really, <laughs> really, you know, I remember the London riots, right? And someone walked into um, Poundland or whatever, and they walked out with uh, um, a case of of water, right? And they got what well, they got about four years in prison, right? Now they never broke the window to go into the shop, right? You know they just walked in there, picked up the water, and walked out. But they were still given four years in prison, right? If it well, yeah. Um, what is it? It's looting. Okay, it's looting. So they've they've looted something, right? That's not really of much value, right? You know if they went, in, you know if they went into Bangor and Olsen. Right, then you can sort of say, well, you know, it's, you went into, you did go into Bangor and Austin, mate. <laughs> you know, you you took out a massive TV. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's worth seven thousand pounds, right? But they didn't do that. They took out 
right? And now, and now we think it's okay to start telling the Iraqis, no, you can't give someone 15 years. That's harsh. 15 years to say like, yeah, 15 years. And you know, Iraqi prisoners, is probably, you probably have to do the 15 years. His family's like, this is a death sentence, the death sentence. But, you know, I'll tell you this, right? If you go to, um, you go to Auschwitz, right? Now, when you go to Auschwitz, right? Which is, which is, it is the most humbling place. One of the most humbling places in the world. And you get a sense of just evil. That's, that's the, that's the sense you get when you, when you go to Auschwitz. It's just like, you can sense the most evil. It's like, it's like when, when I when I went to like the like in the Caribbean when I went to like the whipping trees and things like that, you could just sense that they, they, it was just evil, just pure and utter evil, right? So Auschwitz now, right? You go to Auschwitz, right? And there's just a load of stuff all over the place. And it's shoes, it's glasses, you know, like eyeglasses. You know, um, there'll be like empty wallets because of the Germans would have taken the money out. So there'd be like empty wallets and, you know, um, jewellery boxes and, you know, um, bits of, just just things, right, that have come out of people's houses. You know, things don't, there's, there's going to be things there that just don't worth nothing. Only to that person, there was just worth something to that person. You know, bits of rags, you know, so bits of clothing, bits of rags. So it's just everything, right? But you go and dare touch a piece of it and see what happens to you. Because the minute you touch a piece of it, yeah, your ass is going to end up in prison in Poland, right? And I'll tell you something, huh? you won't end up in prison in one of them cold motherfucking countries, right? If you end up in prison, end up in prison in a warm country, right? Do it in a warm country. The cells will be fucked, right? Because obviously, you know, you go to Iraq, there's going to be no air conditioning in your cell. I can tell you that, right? And there's probably, you know, and you know, probably the toilet facility. Anyway, let's not talk about that. Right? But right you know prison when you when you go to prison in, in them in them type of places right well you wouldn't want to go to prison in poland certainly not right but and you certainly wouldn't want to go to prison in iraq but the only thing you've got is the weather and you know you probably you know the, the food is probably going to be better than the food that you're getting in english prison right because you know it's, it's going to be all it's going to be all how how so you know <laughs> right but you know we shouldn't be telling people we shouldn't be telling people well you know what you can't give someone 15 years in prison for for this type of nonsense because he's done it so you know unfortunately he just has to face the um the facts of what he's done so we move over to america obviously because there's been so much there's been so much news right you know boris johnson can't stop you know this country can't stop producing news so we move over to america right because there was another shooting in america last week i didn't even get a chance to say to talk about this in my video yesterday because it just went on for so long right but another shooting in america Right, where a guy has um gone old guy, I think he's dying, he's in his sixties, gone, bought himself and you see what they say, that people oh, that they, they wanna raise the they wanna raise the limit to people that's twenty one and over to buy weapons like AR fifteen. Well this sixty year well, this man who's in his sixties went right, I'm sure he's about sixty nine in fact, so nearly seventy, right? Went and bought himself an AR fifteen, right? Went to the hospital where he had had a back operation that he wasn't happy with. Seek the doctor and murdered him with the AR-15 and I think another three people with him and you think to yourself really wow that's right and that's another reason why you need to ban guns in your country because even when you're talking about raising the limit so now now we've had a 69 year old do this so what we're going to do raise the limits for an AR-15 to 80 year olds or maybe someone who's 72 can buy an AR-15 I mean you know so it's, it's clear, right, that it doesn't really matter, right, because once someone has a major beef, I'm talking about a major beef, you know, because these people are thinking to themselves, well, I've got a real fucking problem here, so I need to go and buy a weapon of war, right, so I can go into a shopping centre, or into a school, or into a hospital, and just kill people as much as I can. And they, and you know, they, I, I think, right, that, you know, when you've got, like, someone like um, Cancun Tom, whatever his name is, right, when you've got Cancun Senator Tom, what's, what's, what's his name? Him, anyway, right, when you've got people like him, right, 
trying to convince you that you know that the gun law that there's, there's nothing wrong with their gun laws and looking at us as if we're the crazy ones and then you've got a man in his 60s i'm sure late 60s right, who will go and buy an ar-15 after knowing the the week before and then the week before that 18 year olds right, have murdered people so this man in his, right, has gone there because you know what he's got backache Gareth Southgate has asked England fans to behave in tonight when they play Germany. But last night, the Ger last night the English fans was in Germany singing derogative Ger singing derogative songs to the Germans last night. So I think the warning might have went out this morning, but already last night they was already making a damn nuisance of themselves. Right. But you know, England did play hungry the other day. See, I, I tell you, there's so much, been so much stories, right? England did play hungry the other day, right? And um, the, as the English players took the knee, they was booed by the Hungarian supporters, who was mainly children in the in there, because obviously they've been banned from um, they've been banned. Hungary's been banned from from um, playing in front of their their, um, their supporters, right? So it's only it's only basically, basically children that are allowed in. So you speak to yourself, well, wow. So these are children booing the England. So they're starting off very, very young, which for me gives you way for the perfect opportunity to say, okay, well, listen, you know what, right? What we're going to do now is we're just banning you from all competitions. You're no longer in any of our competitions. But if you can't, if 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 you can't, if your if your fans act like that, right, and they're children because these are children, it makes it so much worse because these are these are the future racists. I mean, they're already racist already. So I say they're just future adult racists, I should say. Right? But if the children are that bad, right, then it would be perfect opportunity for UEFA to say, "Well, look." But you see, the thing is, right, racism against black people is not really taken as serious as people think it is. Right? Because this, as I said, this is a perfect opportunity because every single country would look up and say, "Whoa, they've been banned from all competitions. All competitions, you're out." Right? Look how long they've been talking about kick it out. Kick it out. They're not, they're, they're not serious. These people are not serious at all. Right? These people are some jokers. Right? They're not serious at all. They've never been serious about racism. Ever. I've got so much stories to get through. And we'll just start, you know what I mean? So much to get through. Right? We have, we, we, you know, we've got strikes with like the GMB workers from Biffa. Right, who have obviously uh, you know they've, they've they've had a breakdown in their in their um, strike. I can't remember what area it's in, right? Because there's been there's been so much so much news, yeah. That ain't nobody got time for that, right? So much stuff, right? Just like the underground workers or the rail workers has been on strike, right? And ain't nobody got time for that, right? But it's been it's just been chaos in London. Boris Johnson supporters are blaming remainers for Boris Johnson's behaviour. Everything this man does, right? You say, well, they, they want to point the finger and say, oh, well, you know, it's because of the remainers, why, you know, why Boris Johnson was having all these parties and it's their fault for highlighting that Boris Johnson was having all these parties and it's all the press's fault, right? The press have been ganging up on Boris Johnson. No, Boris Johnson has been behaving badly. That's what's been happening, right? All this time, Boris Johnson has been behaving right, like as if to say, he's he's in the Bullingdon Club because that that's the behaviour that that, you're, that Boris Johnson's exhibiting. Of course it is, right? Because he's been he's been allowed to get away with this his whole life. You know, very strangely, right? You know, I had a Tory MP like he wrote a he wrote a long, scathing, horrible letter to Boris Johnson. I mean, this letter was horrible. It was a type of letter, yeah, that that should be starting, dear John. All of my letters start, dear John, by the way, right? But it's the type of letters that should be starting, dear John, right? You're a motherfucking loser and I don't want to be with you no more. <laughs> That's horrible, when That's horrible. Right? So if you've ever received a dear John letter, <laughs> right? But anyway, right? You know, you think that everything this man does, right? He wants to point the finger. Oh, it's their fault for highlighting. He, yes, they come out and he blamed the press in his letter, right? And the letter from his friend, right? The long, 
scathing letter from his friend that should have really started there John to the Prime Minister right just told you know he just told so many things in there right that Boris Johnson and this this guy said well listen you know what I have been right your supporter you've been your friend and your supporter for 15 years and at that point I thought to myself it's taken you 15 years to get to where I am I've always been there but it's taken you 15 years to see what I can to see to see what I've always seen right and in all that time Boris Johnson hasn't been successful in anything right because look the vaccine rollout right is something that any prime minister that was in power would have done everything Boris Johnson has done throughout the pandemic right is something that every prime minister would have done most of them wouldn't have done it in a way that lost us 200,000 of our fellow citizens right most of them wouldn't have done it in a way that they could squirrel off 37 billion pounds to their friends and their family and their donors most of them wouldn't have done it in that way right but they would have done it in they would have done it somehow they would have all been they would have all been through right they would have all done something Right. So I don't understand all this special treatment for Boris Johnson. Oh, you know, the vaccine. Right. Not him. Nothing to do with him. Right. You want to speak about the people who've done the vaccine rollout. You know, you know, you know, praise the people who actually done the vaccine rollout. Praise them. Right. You know, and if you want to praise someone about the 37 billion pounds, so just look. Speak to them about the 37 billion pounds right, that these people stole from this country. But everything that everything that's happened, right? It's always somebody else's. It's always some somebody else. It's their fault with Boris Johnson. It's not. It's not. It's not his fault. It's not his fault for acting like a fucking clown, right? And for for being a complete incompetent, first criminal prime minister in Ten Downing Street. That's not. That's that's that 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 is all our fault. It's all our fault. It's because it's because we said he was going to do it. So that's why it's all, it's all been done. Because we said he was going to do it. I don't understand, right, the people of this country. I do. I do, actually. Because you're just a load of motherfucking racist idiots. And that's why you've put this racist clown in number 10 Downing Street. Right? And, you know, and... I'd say, what was you expected? What was you expecting? Right? If you had voted for Jeremy Corbyn, right, none of this nonsense wouldn't have been happening. After two years, you wouldn't have had yeah, a vote in his confidence. <coughs> Sorry. And if you want an embarrassing Tory MP, up steps Nadine Dorries. Nadine Dorries, right? Who claims that all the Tory donors are happy with the results last night. So all the Tory donors all the people right that vote for the Tories and you know even the 23 donors right that gave the Tories 18 million pounds even they're really happy about it so so there <laughs> so all the Tory donors are really happy right that Boris Johnson scraped through you think really and you're just blatant like that just <laughs> just come out and say well we're happy Fuck the rest of the country. Well, we don't really care what happens to the rest of the country. <laughs> you know, this motherfucker could set this shit on fire, and we don't, and we couldn't give a shit. So, you know, but that's that's just a, that's just simply where we are in this country, right? That the, the, the Tory donors are happy, but the rest of the country is pissed. Well, most of the rest of the country. Well, a bit of the rest of the country. Because all you red wall, all you fools in the red wall, I bet you all think to yourself, well, you know, you know what? You go so big, it's black and the brown people to a wonder, and that's what's going to make us happy. Egypt's. The only man who can fit into a size 10 pencil skirt, Jacob Rees Mogg, has said this was a terrible result for the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister needs to consider their position. All of their 
backbench MPs, you know, a third, over a third of their backbench MPs have gone against them. And the Prime Minister really needs to go to see the Queen to get ready to resign. That was in 2018. Oh, that, sorry, he was speaking about Theresa May in 2018. Right. Now, Theresa May, right, got more of a percentage than Boris Johnson and that's what and that is what right the only man who can fit into a lady size 10 pencil skirt said when that happened to her and last night Boris Johnson right lost by I think it's an extra six points or whatever than Theresa May now Jacob Rees-Mogg has already been saying well if he was to um, win by you know just one one MP then that would be what these people right think that we are no sorry 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 these people think that you are stupid they think you're thick they think you're thick stupid idiot racists right who have absolutely no sense that's really strange because i think that as well it's <laughs> really strange i don't even i don't i agree with jacob rees Mogg. well because he thinks that about you so do i Right. But this is what these people really think about you. Right? Because he could be saying that then and now only one MP would be would suffice. That means, right, that if he had if they had, right, all of them every Tory up every Tory MP not that, that haven't backed him, but just one supported him, right, then he'd be like, Oh well uh I, I think I can stay on the support of Michael Fabricant. <laughs> Seriously, this country, this country, yeah, has, I was going to say it's gone to the dogs, but I don't think so. It's gone to the rats. A lower species. <laughs> like that's where it, you know you, you know because the dog, you know, the dogs are too, dogs are, you know, they're too high in the, in the, in the, in the, um, in the atmosphere of um, of of of, um, of beans, you know, whether they're animal, whether they're animal beans or human beans, you know, you know, dogs are too high up, so so you'd have to go for like, you know, somewhere that's lower down. So that's what we go for. This country's gone to the rats. Dirty, nasty, rabies infested. That's all the Brexiters, of course. What would it take to make Brexiters understand Brexit was a mistake? Perhaps for them to stand in queues in the airports, right? You know, sovereignty and taking back control seem to be a lot less attractive when you're stuck in an airport struggling with red tape. And there are still people who are stranded, right, in all over Europe at the moment, right, who need to get back to work. <laughs> people need to get back to work and they're stranded. Their children need to go back to school, but they're stranded. I just hope, so I hope that loads of them are Brexiters, right? That's my only hope, that loads of them are Brexiters, right? And they're really feeling what it's like to have actually left the EU, right? And shoot yourself in the forehead. France gets its own way. The French, those damn French again! Right, with their flipping sexy motherfucking language. Make me sick. <laughs> the French have got their own way. This is all about like procurement um, instruments. And it means, yeah, that countries that are not. Um, that are not in the EU, right, are going to have a much more difficult period now um, getting, get, you know, getting their goods into the EU, you know. And the, the French are very happy with this because I think the French knows that this really fucks us up over here. Because obviously, you know, the French are taking over um, the, the leadership of the EU. Either next week or next month, they're taking over the leadership of it, right, which, you know, well, I mean, you know that. I mean that that 
that's going to calm down, you know, whatever Frexit they was thinking about, that's going to calm it down for the, next, for the next few years, because obviously the French have got the leadership. So, so you know, so, so you know, so, so some ill feeling might move over to other countries, but, you know, everyone, everyone gets that. Every, everyone does get that. So, you know, obviously we're, we're not going to get it. We've probably had it before, but we're not going to get it again. Right. But, um, so, yeah, so the French, so this, this, these new procurement instruments, right, believe me, they're going to have a really negative effect on this country. From what I've been reading about it, it's going to have a really negative effect on this country, right? The way how this is implemented, right? and I believe the French, right, are going to take real pleasure in it. And there's been loads of um, dead shellfish washing up on beaches all over the country, and a beach in um, Yorkshire. Yeah, has had thousands of dead crabs and lobsters, and um, you know, d come up and died on the beach and died and was dying. Thousands of them, and I think that they're thinking that a lot of this is down to because obviously the fishermen aren't out there collecting these things no more because you know, there's you know the the, the massive market for things like for, for a lot of these things yeah is in Europe, and because they can't get because the, the, our fishermen can't really get these things into the into the EU no more because of the class of the, because of how our water is classed. Our water's filthy, disgusting and full of shit. Right? So because of that, right, you know, a lot of these crustaceans, they're all coming up on the beaches and just dying on the beaches. You know, we just used to see these things, but it was only very limited before we left the EU and now it's very, very heavy. And as I said, a beach on, on in Yorkshire, right, has seen thousands of dead and dying lobsters and crabs just come up on the beach. It must be a horrible stuff, it must be a nasty stink and it really stinks. Really, really stinks, really bad. Stockbroken stockbroken companies are complaining about the cost of doing business in the e in the in the UK after Brexit. And you know if stockbroken firms are complaining, you know there must be some shit going down. <laughs> so the stockbrokers, um, Panero, Gordon, have said things are really fucked up in the in the UK and it's all down to Brexit why this is happening to us right and we find it very very difficult to trade in Britain stockbroking companies imagine that because you know they're minted right them people they've got bucks them them people right they're laden with cash and if they're saying you know something this shit's getting expensive because remember yeah they a lot of those, they haven't really got, you know, it's not, it's not like, you know, they've, they've got 10 billion bottles of Coca-Cola, right, and they've got anything to do with moving it from in warehouse, they've got nothing to do with that, everything they do is on paper, so they've just got buildings and computers, that's it, buildings and computers, right, and a, a stack of A4, right, mobile, those are mobile phones, yeah, but, but seriously, they haven't really got, they, you know, these people, they, they don't have assets, they just have buildings, they, they have buildings and, you know, computers and that's their real assets, everything's on paper, so when stockbroking firms are complaining about how difficult they're finding business, then you know some shit has really gone down, anyway guys, look how long I've been on here, I've been on here for far too long, right, but as I said, there's been so much news and I've had so much to get through, as you can tell, Right, so I have to bow out of here. This, my friends, is by any means necessary. I'm James C. John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.